For many, many years, I've been using small little suction cup mounts like this whenever I do auto-related videos. And these little suction cup mounts work just fine, but they do have some downsides. And obviously the biggest downside is the fact that, well, it's got one suction cup. If this one suction cup gives while you're driving along with your expensive camera, obviously there's going to be a very expensive accident. But the other problem with these is that, well, they don't give you a huge amount of space between the camera and your car. So sometimes you're just not able to get the shot that you want. So last week I went ahead and I bought this. This is the Delkin Fat Gecko Dual Mount. It's obviously got two suction cups, much better than one, but most importantly, it's got a very nice long extension here so that I should be able to get my camera further away from the car than I could before. And this should allow me to do some better shots. Now I haven't actually had a chance to try this out yet, so I thought I'd run some tests today. I wanna to try this out on different types of terrain with different types of cameras. The first camera that I wanna test out is my DJI Osmo Action. It's lightweight, it has excellent stabilization, and I don't think it'll have any problem on this mount. The next camera up is going to be my Sony RX100 Mark 7. It's a pocket camera. It weighs quite a bit more than the DJI Osmo, but it's still fairly lightweight. And the third camera that I want to try is my Canon 7D Mark II with the zoom lens on it. This weighs about three pounds, so it's well under what the Gecko is supposed to be able to do here, but we'll find out. So for the first test, I'm going to go ahead and try off-roading. We're going to go up this really, really bumpy granite hill back here. And that's gonna give us an idea of how well the gecko can hold itself together under off-road conditions. I wanna know how well the arm here is gonna to hold together because once I get the cannon on here, that's gonna be three pounds of weight bouncing pretty hard on this ball joint. So let's see how it does. But first, we're gonna go ahead and start with the lightweight DJI Osmo action. Now I know that it looks like the camera is bouncing all over the place here, but it actually isn't. What's happening here is that the Osmo Action has really, really good image stabilization. And it's also really smart image stabilization. So it sees the landscape off in the distance and it is trying its best to stabilize all of that. And it's doing a really good job. The side effect of stabilizing the landscape, however, is that it makes it look like the foreground, the Jeep, where the camera is connected to, it makes it look like that is bouncing all over the place. But that's not what's happening and it's kind of screwing up our test here. So I went ahead and I did another run, but this time I turned the image stabilization completely off on the DJI. This is what it looks like with just recording the video straight up, no assistance from any image stabilization. And it looks incredible. I mean, it looks like the camera is soldered onto the car. There's almost no vibration at all. Every now and then I'll hit a really big bump and there's just a little bit of a thud in the camera and that's about it. But you have to understand, I mean, this is really, really rough terrain. If you look in the side view mirror, I mean, you can see me bouncing all over the place. But the camera, I mean, it's just absolutely rock solid. I was really, really impressed with this result because I did not expect this. I had no idea that the fat gecko with an arm as long as it has could stay as stable as this is. Next up is the Sony RX100 Mark 7, and this is with the image stabilization turned on. However, the image stabilization in the Sony here, it works a whole lot differently than it does in the DJI. It's not locking on to anything in particular, so the background is still kind of, you know, jerking up and down. The car looks like it's bouncing around. There's a whole lot of warpy business going on, you know, on the car side and the window area there. None of this has anything to do with the fat gecko mount. The fat gecko mount was still holding the camera rock solid. Everything we're seeing here is just due to the image stabilization on the Sony. So once again, I did another run with the image stabilization turned off this time. But when I first saw this footage, I thought maybe I'd screwed up and left the image stabilization on. So I double checked the camera and no, this is with image stabilization turned off. Nevertheless, there's still a whole lot of warpy artifacting going on and it doesn't completely look right. It's also just bouncing around more than it actually was. I don't know if this is partially due to rolling shutter effect. I don't know if maybe the Sony RX100 has 
optical image stabilization that simply can't be turned off. Maybe it's on all the time. I'm not sure what was going on here, but either way, it doesn't look good. And it's no fault of the Fat Gecko mount, which was doing a really good job during this. It just ends up that the Sony RX100 is not a good camera to be using for this kind of work. And finally, here is the Canon 7D Mark II DSLR. This is with the lens stabilization on. And as I predicted, just a few bumps into it, the ball joint gave out and the camera flopped down. I thought I had tightened those ball joints down really, really hard, but apparently not hard enough. So I went ahead and I repositioned it and I tightened them down even harder, I mean, with all my strength. But I could tell, even while tightening these, that if I put pressure on that arm, it would still move. So I think the issue here is that even though the Fat Gecko was rated for eight pounds and I only put three pounds on it, when you hit a bump, more than three pounds of force gets applied to those joints. Probably on the hard hits, way more than three pounds. So it's just simply going over the limit and it's just not capable of holding that kind of weight under these conditions. So once I was ready, I headed back up the hill, but this time I went a whole lot slower than I did with the other two cameras. I just didn't want to take the chance of going too fast and hitting another hard bump and having the camera flop down and some damage happen to it. Now there is still a fair amount of vibration going on here, and you can kind of tell the difference between the lens stabilization, the drifting that that causes, and the actual high frequency vibration, which is the camera actually shaking on the mount. So if you ignore the drifting that's going on, which is most likely caused by the lens stabilization, and you just look at the actual high frequency vibrations, it's not that bad considering what we're looking at here. I mean, we're dealing with a heavy camera on a long arm, mounted to a car that is going over seriously bumpy terrain. I thought that it would be a whole lot shakier than this. So this is a lot better than I expected, even though it's nowhere near as good as the DJI Osmo Action was. And as much as I would have loved to have done another run up this hill with the lens stabilization off, there's no way I was gonna do that again. I was way too nervous about having this camera mounted with that ball joint. Next, I wanted to test these cameras on a normal paved road. Specifically, I wanted to test them on the kind of back roads that I normally do a lot of my car videos on. So I chose this one. It's nice, smooth pavement. It's got nice turns. And as before, the DJI Osmo Action is absolutely rock solid on here. Now, I was hitting speeds of just a little bit over 50 miles an hour in some of these places. And I really thought that the wind buffeting would cause at least some vibrations to sneak in, but there's nothing. And like I said before, this is with all of the camera's image stabilization turned completely off. So what you see is the camera just mounted on the car with no help. And it's just, I mean, solid. I'm just so impressed with how well this mount works with an action camera. The Sony RX100 Mark VII pocket camera, however, is showing the exact same problems that we saw in the off-road test. There's just a whole lot of strange, warpy artifacting going on. It's still kind of shaky. And it's really no fault of the mount because when I look at this camera through my side view mirror, I can tell that it is on there solid, just like the DJI was. The camera's not shaking. It's really just some problem with the image stabilization or the rolling shutter in this camera, so it's really difficult to test. Bottom line is, the Sony RX100 just isn't a good camera for doing moving car videos. The Canon DSLR once again showed that it may be too heavy of a camera for this mount, because less than 30 seconds into the drive, the wind caused one of the joints to slip out and the camera became misaligned. After tightening it back down again, we continued on the road, and I also have the image stabilization on the lens turned off. So there's no lens stabilization here whatsoever. That means that all the vibrations we're seeing are the actual vibrations from the camera on the fat gecko mount. And it's actually doing a reasonably good job. 
I mean, yeah, there are definitely some shakes, jitters, and vibrations. You know, we didn't see those at all with the lightweight DJI. But with a three pound camera on a long arm in a car going over 50 miles an hour in some of these places, I think that the amount of vibration we're seeing is actually pretty reasonable. It's not bad at all. I'm, I'm still impressed with how rigid and solid the fat gecko mount is. But once again, you know, these ball joints do scare me because when I am going at this speed down the road, the wind can be putting quite a bit of force on those ball joints. And the whole time I was doing this, I was afraid that one of them was gonna give out on me. Well, I'm really happy that I did this little test because I think I learned a lot from it. And the main thing that I learned is that the fat gecko mount is a whole lot better than I was expecting. And it's definitely a lot better than any of the other mounts that I've used before. I mean, this thing is super solid. It is super rigid when it's mounted onto the glass here. And it does a perfect job when I've got something like the Osmo Action on here. There was no vibration at all. I mean, you saw the footage. It really just was absolutely perfect. And that was with no stabilization going on on the camera itself. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, my Canon DSLR. This thing is rated for eight pounds. I only put three pounds on it, and I think that was really on the line, if not a little bit over the line. The fact is, I mean, yeah, if you're on a very smooth road going slow, then three, four pounds is probably just fine, but I wouldn't do it, because you hit one little speed bump or one pothole, and this arm's just gonna give out. So, I'm not gonna recommend putting a DSLR on this, and I'm not gonna put mine on there. As far as the Sony RX100 pocket camera goes, based on what I've seen with the DSLR and with the Osmo Action here, I'm confident that that pocket camera should have worked just fine. I think all the problems that we saw were really just faults of the camera itself, not anything to do with the fat gecko mount. I think with a different pocket camera, we would have had different results. So I do think that you can probably put anything up to maybe a pound on here and it will be absolutely rock solid. Once you get a little bit over a pound, vibrations will start to creep in. You get over three pounds and you risk the ball joint giving out on you. Anyway, I'm really happy with my purchase. I'm gonna be using this a lot now on my future car videos. If you have any questions or comments, as always, just leave them below and thanks for watching.